The main benefit of setbacks is moving yourself beyond all doubt. So believe it or not, there will come a time in the recovery process when you're starting to feel pretty good. Your understanding is good. Your behavioral skills are helping you deal with any anxiety when it arises. You're not feeling as many fight or flight sensations, not as many panic attacks. You're going out more. You're starting to feel that there's light at the end of the tunnel. But since it's early days, there will be some lingering doubt in the back of your mind. You're just not totally convinced that if you felt those extreme feelings again, that you'd be able to handle it. You know, you know you've got some skills now, but you're just still not really wanting those extreme feelings to come back. So that causes anticipatory anxiety, low level adrenaline. And if you do feel any of those feelings, you quickly misinterpret, quickly catastrophize, and you can get caught back up in the cycle setback but this is why setbacks are actually very beneficial because you get to practice all over again you get to prove it all over again that it's just fight or flight and every time you prove to yourself that it's just fight or flight that it does come down if I wait if I stick with it if I don't avoid I don't need the safety behaviors every time you prove this to yourself you grow in confidence and all those doubts start to get smaller and smaller and eventually you just are completely convinced of the truth of it all as I said at the start of book one I know I can never have panic disorder again I just know it I don't hope that I won't I actually completely know that I can't get caught in that cycle again it's impossible because I know so well that there's nothing seriously wrong with me so I won't misinterpret and I won't catastrophize why, why would I I can still feel that the sensations are very unpleasant if anxiety arises but I can't get caught in the cycle to the same degree again it's impossible so setbacks let you see how well you know the reality about panic. So you may even be free of panic for a month or two and then suddenly feel fight or flight out of the blue. So if this happens, observe how you respond. Do you quickly think, oh no, it's back, it's worse than ever. You know, if you do, then you'll know, right, I've still got some work to do on this. Go back to the books. Go back to the practice, see if you're avoiding anything, set up some more fear hierarchies, deliberately go out and practice with more anxiety, go towards it, okay? And the more you do that, the more you get used to it, the less fear you'll feel. And when you lose your fear of panic, it will stop happening eventually altogether. Okay, so setbacks are perfect times to practice. Now let's look at some common ways in which we maintain anxiety between attacks. So these are helpful to look at because if you've done all the practice and you're still feeling that you're not making the progress you feel you should, just some of these subtle ways of thinking and behaving may be taking place. So just observe them. So thinking will never get better. The longer this goes on, the more we worry. This is never going to end. All right? Even if you're having difficulty with the practice, no, I'm no good at this. This is not going to end. I'm worse than everybody else, and so on. Do you see the subtle anticipatory anxiety, resistance? All right? Self-analyzing, believing we have an emotional problem. Now, this generally isn't helped by friends and family who are you know, giving us advice in all directions about our emotions, family maybe particularly. And then we find ourselves wondering, you know, is this just who we are? Uh, I'm just born this way. Maybe I'm mentally ill, emotionally unbalanced, weak. And the more you start self-analyzing, 
the more you start getting yourself caught up in that obsessional type thinking again more anticipatory anxiety thinking that the problem is beyond our control so especially sometimes if you've, if you've tried the practice and you still feel that you're not getting anywhere so that you're still trying to get rid of the panic and the worse it seems to be so we start thinking that it's just simply beyond our control there's nothing we can do about it obviously i'm no good at this it's not going to go away i can't stop it so you see again anticipatory anxiety resistance catastrophization you're still on low level adrenaline 